In this example, we are going to look at the torsion of a combined open and closed section. For this problem, we are looking at a beam cross-section as shown here, where we have a thin-walled square closed section of thickness T and width and height A, connected to a open L section that has a width and a height of A and thickness of 2T. The question asks us to determine the angle of twist per unit length and maximum shear stress in the cross-section for an applied torque or internal resultant torque T. Now the problem also tells us that we can assume the structure is thin-walled, so we will use thin-walled approximations throughout the problem. If we look at this section and the problem, we can make some simplifying observations. Well, first, let's label our corners so we have some reference points in terms of talking about what's going on in this structure. So the assumptions we can make are, first, the stiffness of the open section is negligible relative to the closed section. So we know that closed cross sections have a very high torsional stiffness while open sections have a low stiffness. So although this problem is technically statically indeterminate, we can neglect the stiffness of this open section as a first step, assume all the torsion is carried by the square closed section, and we'll check that our assumption is valid in the end. If it wasn't valid, then we would have to solve this as a statically indeterminate problem. Because we are neglecting the contribution of the open section, only this closed section is reacting to the torque, and torque creates a constant shear flow in a closed section. So Q34, Q45, Q56, and Q63 are all constant, and we will call that QC. Similarly, because we are neglecting anything occurring in the open section, Q12 and Q23 are equal to zero. Even if there was torsion carried by this, you have to remember that the shear stress distribution for torsion in an open section is different than that for a closed section. It doesn't produce a shear flow. Actually, the average shear flow would be zero, although it does generate shear stresses. We'll also use the subscript C for the closed section and O for the open section just to clean up our equations. So the first step is to look at the angle of twist, and we're going to look at the angle of twist of the closed cell, assuming that the torque carried by the closed cell is equal to the entire torque. To do this, we will take our equation 3.4 from our formula sheet, which is the angle of twist per unit length for a thin-walled closed section, and we will apply this to our particular cross-section. So we have to substitute in our torque T. Our area is just the length of one side, which is A squared. And uh, our t thickness is T. And the integral of 1 over T dS just becomes 1 over T times the perimeter, which is 4A over T. Okay. If we take this equation, we can cancel out terms and simplify it and get that the angle of twist is the torque divided by our thickness times the length cubed of one side of the closed section times our shear modulus g. Now that we've calculated this angle of twist, we know the open section has to follow the same deformation. So what we can do is take this angle of twist, use our torsion formula for an open section, and calculate the torque that must be carried by the open section to match this deformation. So in order to do that, we will do that comparison by taking equation um, 3.6 from our formula sheet, which is for the angle of twist for a thin-walled open section. Applying this, uh, uh, what we do is input our terms here, so this torque becomes the torque of the open section, so 3 times torque of the open section, 
the length s becomes a plus a, which is 2a, and the thickness in this region is 2t, so that's why we have this 2t term here. And we equate this to precisely the angle of twist per unit length we calculated, assuming the closed section carries the whole torque. So this comes down to here. If we do that, we can rearrange it to express how much torque the open section should carry in terms of the entire torque we assumed is carried by the closed section. And if we calculate this out, we get 16t squared over 3a squared times t. So it's a ratio of t over a, um, and as a becomes larger relative to t, so it becomes closer and closer to a thin wall, effectively the amount of torque carried by the open section will reduce. So what we can do is we can look at the limit of our uh, assumption for thin wall, and that is that the cross-sectional dimension A is greater than 10 times T. So if we set A equal to 10 times T and plug it in here, we will find sort of the highest amount of torque uh, that we can experience in the open section. So when we do that, we see that the torque uh, carried by the open section will be less than 4 75ths of the entire torque, which is 5.3% of the torque. Now 5.3 is, is not exactly an insignificant number, um, but usually from engineering standpoints and because we're doing a fairly simplified analysis, we're usually happy if we are uh, within a reasonable range. And in fact, what you can see that we're doing is we assumed the uh, closed section carry the entire torque, the open section will be carrying this much torque, so really what we're doing is solving the problem and the stresses, which we'll get to on the next slide, for a slightly higher torque than the applied torque. So it is actually a conservative analysis from that standpoint. Now, what we need to do is look at the stresses. So we'll first look at the stresses in a closed section, and for that we will apply our uh, shear flow formula for torsion of a closed section, which is equation 3.3. And uh, we see that uh, for our problem, shear flow C, we were calling QC our constant uh, shear flow in the closed section, is our torque divided by two times our area happens to be A squared. We need to convert this shear flow to a shear stress because the question asked us for the maximum shear stress. So we can recognize that shear flow is just shear stress times thickness. So then our shear stress is shear flow divided by thickness and we get torque divided by two times T times A squared. We need to look at also the open section uh, because even though it carries a very small amount of torque, we do know that open sections have very, very high shear stresses when under torsion. So if we consider the shear stress in the open cell, we can apply our equation for torsion of an open section, where our maximum shear stress is three times the torque carried by that section, divided by the entire length of that thin walled section times the thickness squared. In our problem, we need to not put the entire torque there because we're looking at the amount of torque carried by the open section, which was our 4 75ths of the total torque. Uh, the total length is the, the two sides of the L, which is A plus A, it's 2A, and the thickness is twice as much in the open section as it is in the closed section, so we get 2T here. This simplifies to torque divided by 50 times a times t squared. Now what we want to do is look at which one of these is larger. So we'll do that by taking the ratio. So if I take the maximum shear stress in the open section and divide it by the maximum shear stress in the closed section, I get this ratio, my t's cancel out, uh, my, oh, sorry, my torques cancel out, my thicknesses, one of them cancels out here with this one, one of my a's cancels out here with this one, and we get A over 25T. 
Now we can apply the same uh, reasoning we did for the comparison where we can look at for a greater than 10t because that's the limit for our thin walled assumption. So if we do that and set a equal to 10t and solve it, this, we get tau max in the open section over uh, uh, the shear stress in the closed section is 10t over 25t, which is 0 0.4. So the shear stress in the open section is 40%, that in the closed section, so the maximum stress will occur in the closed cell. But we have to be a little bit careful here. If we look at this ratio, we have A in the numerator and T in the denominator. So this ratio will get larger and larger as A increases. So if A becomes larger than 10T, it's still thin-walled. And the limit is when A is equal to 25T, this ratio will be equal to 1. So for uh, uh, structure, for if the structure of A is larger than 25 times t, it will still be thin-walled, all of our equations will still be valid, but now the open section will be critical. So we actually get the solution as follows here. For A between 25t and 10t, the maximum shear stress occurs in the closed section and is given by this formula here, which is what we calculated uh, here. And the for A greater than 25t, the critical location switches to the open section and the maximum shear stress is given by this formula, which is the maximum shear stress in the open section.